Hey friends, today I am hanging out at Epcot. It is a beautiful weekend and I wanted to come out and check on the construction here in Future World or what's left of Future World. And also I wanted to ride Mission Space. I was talking with some people the other day and they were talking about how much they dislike the ride and I wanted to see why people don't like it. I mean, I haven't ridden it in a while and there are some like factors that I can see why people dislike it, but I think I needed to ride it. So let's go do this. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I also wanted to check on the progress of what's left of Future World. And as you can see right here, our Project Tomorrow, inventing the wonders of the future. They're up there tearing apart the structures. And I'm very excited to see what they come up with. It's gonna be beautiful once it's done. Look at that big crack right there in the foundation. That's really funny, isn't it? It's all gutted out in there, nothing left. Another thing that I'm not used to seeing is the gigantic canopies that used to be right there. Like, it's just so strange to me sometimes not seeing that stuff. I do have to say out of all the attractions that are coming to Walt Disney World, I am most excited for the Guardians ride. Only because it's something we've never seen before. I mean Tron is great but it's already existing in Shanghai and the same thing with uh, Ratatouille. So this is going to be a brand new ride concept and that's why I'm excited for it. Hopefully for the 50th. Just saying. As you walk around you can hear all the construction noise. Oh. It just stopped as I said that. It was like, beep. oh, now I hear a saw though. Beep, zzz, beep, zzz. And then test track goes on, it goes whoosh. So it's like, man. I feel like it's definitely coming along pretty quick. I mean, the building's been sitting there for, I think a good year and a half. So I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, hoping for the 50th. That would be amazing. I'm gonna head right on over to Mission Space now. And plus we can check on Space 220, the restaurant that's supposed to be opened up right next door to it. I'm excited. I don't know if I'm gonna ride the more intense version or the less intense versions. They are two separate rides. So we'll see when we get up there. I really think the building and facade of Mission Space is just amazing. Look at that. Something really you stare at the first time you see it. Here is where you can see the wait times. They have Earth Green Mission, 25 minute wait. Mars Orange Mission, which is 50 minute wait. The Earth one and the green one is less intense. And then the orange, of course, is more intense. And this causes a lot of like G-force and it actually might bother people that have ear problems. For the purpose of this video, I think I'm gonna be getting a little intense. Right there where they have the black, uh, it looks like garbage bag, on top of the little construction walls, I believe is the entrance to Space 220, which is the restaurant that's basically gonna be like themed like you're eating in outer space. And it's appropriately put right here next to uh, Mission Space. I'm very excited for that restaurant. It's gonna be a really cool experience. Mission Space as an attraction on its own is really, really educational and it's really cool to people that love space travel or NASA. It has tons of memorabilia and just a real good history lesson of all of our flights to the stars. This plaque right here was flown into space aboard the Atlantis on April 24, 2000. And it says, to all who follow their dreams, to infinity and beyond. That plaque was in space and it's here right now in Epcot. I think that's amazing. You can also see these rover tracks right here. Spirit and Opportunity. These exploration rovers landed on Mars January 1st, 2004 and then January 25th, 2004. We're back and we're on Mars. Well, I just noticed that the uh, more intense version went from a 50 minute wait down to a 25 minute wait. So I think we need to make our move now. And yeah, that is gonna be the entrance into the new Space 220 restaurant. And the queue kinda takes you back this way a little bit. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see anything else. Oh, nope, I guess not. I've heard some rumors of when it's supposed to open and a lot of people are saying maybe by the end of the year, maybe even October this year. That would be really cool because it would be uh, just in line for the 50th anniversary. We're gonna get all sanitized and proceed into the ISTC, the International Space Training Center. Look at how cool the queue is in here. 
I love it. And if you are a big fan of, you know, retro Epcot and you like Horizons, you can see right in the center of that wheel there, they have the Horizons logo. Isn't that nifty? When you get up to this point, it actually starts talking about all of the space flights throughout time and it even makes uh, some brave predictions at the very end. As you can see, we got the first man in space in 1961 and then it continues on going through and through. There's John Glenn and then at the very end when we get up here, I'll show you, they got some really cool things. The first Dalmatian in space happened in 2030. See him right there? And then of course in 2035, Deep Space Mission Flight First X2. Maybe in nine years, that's gonna be me and Gracie going to space. How cool would that be? As you can see, astronaut flight training isn't like anything you've ever experienced before. It is intense. And if you would like to opt out, just ask any member of the ISTC crew for directions. You may I was also curious on how you socially distance on this ride because it's very compact and uh, there's just no social distancing because you get your own like pod. So each party gets its own pod and there's four spots in there. So me by myself, I'm gonna have to pull the weight of all the other job positions. You know, there's a like pilot, navigator, engineer, and uh, flight attendant. <laughs> If you are prone to motion sickness or made uncomfortable by enclosed dark spaces, simulators, or spinning, you may exit the flight training area now. Ask a uniformed crew member for directions to the green team, less intense training area. They definitely give you a lot of warnings, I have to say. Begin boarding now. Whoop. This is what the inside of the cabins look like. This is why some people might not like it. It's a little bit, it's a little tight. So I think we're gonna sit in this uh, second seat. You have to climb in here. Yep, right about here. Sounds good. Another funny thing, they actually have sick bags in here, kind of like you would have on an airplane flight. Look at right here. How crazy is that? Pilot, the X2 is Oh, oh it's closing in on me. Flags. Wow. Located on the instrument panel. That happened Engineer, very quick. Just a reminder. This is what it's like. Like you're really uh <laughs> if you're claustrophobic, you're not gonna like this ride. Look at these are the little joysticks too. The MR24, and then we have to hit all the buttons. Bing boom bing boom bing. Oh boy, I think it's about time we're lifting up. Oh, oh boy. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, the screen isn't the best either, but I love it. I'm gonna give you a look. Hold on. Zero G. Our spaceship Earth. Engineer, activate hypersleep. Now. Hypersleep? <laughs> Okay, head back 
Releasing restraints. Now push the restraints up. Be sure to gather all your belongings and follow the arrows out. This is the outside of the ride vehicles if you ever wondered what they looked like. And you basically just spin and spin. It's really nifty, isn't it? I can see why people don't like that ride. I mean, it, the intense version is intense, yes, but even if you didn't do the intense version, if you're claustrophobic, if you're afraid of dark rides, if you don't like 3D simulators, there's a lot of issues happening on the ride, but overall, it is such a cool experience. I really do enjoy doing it, and it doesn't bother me that much. Like, I, uh, I, I'm used to riding rides like that, and I think just the theming and the history, this is a, a, a fun attraction. The music when you're walking out, though, really, really is awesome. It makes me feel like I'm in Epcot. As you leave and you walk out of the gift shop, I love the mural right here. Look at Donald. Donald always looks like he's angry for some reason. Look, he's got his arms crossed and he's pouting. Goofy looks like he's just playing around. Mickey and Minnie, they just look cute. And Pluto, adorable. Also, they have some really, really cool, amazing hidden Mickeys in the gift shop outside. I'll try to show them to you and then let me know if you see them. There's two of them. Look at these panels and boxes. I'm sure you're gonna spot them immediately, but that is clever, very clever. Now that we've got Mission Space out of the way, I think I'm gonna head on over to the other side of Future World. It's no longer gonna be called Future World in the future, uh, but I'm gonna call it that until we actually get there. I wanna swing by Test Track though to see what the wait time is. It looks like it's at 50 minutes which I don't even think is 50 minutes because I've seen the line go all the way back to mouse gears almost and it would be at like 60 minutes so this is probably around 30 minutes I would say. Earlier I was talking about how it's not going to be Future World anymore because they are like changing it and actually making it into different themed land so where Mission Space was it's going to be World Discovery and then in the middle kind of by Spaceship Earth would be World Celebration and then of course over by the land would be World Nature and then World Showcase and I don't know how I feel about that I mean I like it it's kind of cool but I feel like it's always going to be Future World to me Flower and Garden is still happening and it's going to be going on for at least a couple more weeks but I love just walking past here and seeing this display. It's always beautiful. One thing that I've actually been wanting to do for a while is the Disney Pixar Short Film Festival. I've done this in the past and it's where Captain EO used to be. I'm not too sure if I can film the show but I can show you all of the cool stuff that's in there and we'll find out if we can film the show once we get there. But there is a cool vantage point from this area where you can actually see some of the cool stuff that's over on the other side of the walls of Future World. Right here it is. You can see they're showing Get a Horse, Piper, and Feast. I feel like they've been showing these for a while now, but I really do enjoy it. And I've actually watched other shows here. Like I've seen uh, uh, Luxo and I've seen The Lamp and even The Toy Tinkerer. I've seen them all here before. And right up here, as we're actually going up like a hill, we can see a little bit more on the inside there. And that's what I wanted to show you. You can see the back side of Spaceship Earth for once. I see a lot of different cranes and even tents. I'm excited for this all to get finished and just being able to see a fully complete Epcot. I feel so blessed that I've been able to be here for a lot of the last days of Epcot stuff. So I was here for the last day of Illuminations. I was here for the uh, last day of Club Cool. Like I was in there the last day before they closed it down. And I just feel blessed that I live here and I'm so close that I can enjoy these classics one last time like I did. And uh, I'm gonna continue doing that because I don't know, for some reason, it, it, it makes me feel good. Like, you know what I mean? It makes me feel like I'm at like a historical thing that's happening. Even if it's just a, a, a location that gives away free soda. To me, I thought that was a big deal. <laughs> now I think it's time we're gonna head on in. And it looks like the wait time is only seven minutes. 
And it's funny because inside here is where Mickey Mouse had his last meet and greet spot. The day before the parks closed down last year, I came here and I actually had a photo with Mickey right here and uh, there was nobody in here. I remember standing here and just talking to Mickey for 20 minutes without a single guest coming in and saying hi or getting a photo with him. Such a cool experience that was and you could see Mickey throughout the years on the walls as we get closer to the theater itself. I love this carpet though. We grabbed our 3D glasses and they actually have them in bundles of two so it's easy to grab. And now we have to find a uh, blue circle and stand and wait for the show to start. Oh, there it is. I was calling him the toy tinkerer. <laughs> I probably sounded so stupid, but yeah, that's what I was talking about. I've seen that here. I also saw for the birds in here as well. Oh, going into the theater now. Absolutely amazing. I love those short films and like the the first one that came out I filmed that one that one was with Mickey Mouse and it was really cool to see all the different like animation 3d and going from black and white to color but feast Literally made me tear up Absolutely amazing. I didn't show any of these two because I was so interested in them and they're more Pixar You know what I mean less animated, but that was, the feast was an amazing short. It literally made me tear up. Now I think I'm gonna head on over to the seas. I felt like going for a ride on that. Inside the short theater, I really cooled down because of the AC. And I also remember always going to the seas to cool down because it's very nice and cold. So I thought it'd be nice to take a little trip. And it kind of makes sense that we did a space ride and now we'll do a deep sea ride. So we're gonna go all the way up and I go all the way down. All the way up, all the way down. Wait time, only 10 minutes. I'm really liking the wait times today. It's supposed to be a busy spring break weekend, but we've been lucking out here. As soon as you go through these automatic doors, you can just feel the AC hit you. And it is super hot today. I think it's in the 90s. Oh yeah. Rescue. <laughs> oh. I feel like you can feel it actually. You can feel how cold it is in here through the camera. Also, you know what else I think is kind of funny? Earlier we were at Space Base and now we're heading into Sea Base. Hi. First one? There we are. Oh, science is great. There's so much to know. Why the board explores, it's time to go. Look at Nemo swimming out the sea. Oh, don't worry. Just keep your eyes on the board along the way. Looking for my son. Ooh, I can help. Ooh, oh, no. It's Nemo. Where? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that's 
too much fun. I love it. And you know what? You're gonna have in a big blue world stuck in your head for a long time after riding that ride. In fact, it's still stuck in my head several years later. I came right up to the upper level so that we can get a look at some dolphins, sharks, sea turtles, reef fish, and they have it all kind of in a one-way direction as you walk down into the aquarium. Ooh, look at all those fishes. Oh, I see a hammerhead right there. Do you see that? I wonder if we're going to be able to get a closer look as he gets over here. It's down at the bottom there. Ah, oh, there's that hammerhead shark. And look, that's the ride right there. You got a hammerhead shark swimming right by you. The aquarium here is actually huge. A lot of people don't realize it because they don't come up to the upper level, but take a look at this. It's gigantic, isn't it? Well, that was so much fun. I love riding the seas. It's so soothing. It's quiet, it's cooling, and it's got a catchy little tune in a big blue world, and then you get off and you get to explore the aquarium area. It's like a, an attraction in an attraction. You know what I mean? I think on my way out, I'm going to swing into Pin Trader's headquarters and see if they got any fancy, like, limited edition items. Inside, they have a nice limited edition section that has a lot of pins, but they also have, like, festival magic bands and even some holiday things. And I came across the uh, It's a Small World 55 Years, like, Easter egg. I don't know what you would call this. Maybe a collectible? And I decided to buy it because I think it's so cool. Look at their Easter eggs and they say 55 years and it's going to be hard because the light's going to be reflecting but you can see you got the hippo on there. Three eggs and you'll never believe how much this cost. $15 and you get your discount with it. That's not too shabby I would say. These are really really nifty and it's so strange that I found them in the pin traders headquarters like I would think they would be in Magic Kingdom because it's a small world. Huh, small world. <laughs> I had to open it up just to see what they look like uh, out of the uh, box and I really think it's cool. I mean, they don't have anything inside them, but this is really nice and it's celebrating 55 years of a, It's a Small World at the Disneyland Resort. I think it opened up in May, but these are really, really well done. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I like them. And with that, I think I am done here today. I had so much fun hanging out, checking out the construction, riding Mission Space, and then going over to the Short Film Festival. Those were amazing, and like I said, Feast literally is a tearjerker. Watch it, if you can look it up and find it, I highly suggest it. And then topping it off with uh, the seas. It was so fun. Anywho, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.